All right, Max, mm. let's get into this other topic because this I, don't is ha- I don't have any headlines. So, so again, we're working on the 2016 summer edition of Dave Campbell's Texas Football. It's going to press next Wednesday. It will be out uh, late June. We'll give you an official date as soon as we get it. But okay. um, talking, let's let's call it June 25th for now. That is give or take about three days, let's say. Okay. Sure. Um, so we're working on that. And one of the things we're doing is in the class previews, or actually in the class reviews, mm-hmm. we have uh, the returning stats leaders for each classification so uh obviously in 4a for example trendavian mm-hmm. dixon was an outrageous wide receiver at navasota but he has since graduated so he's not eligible for this these right. are guys who are coming back who put up crazy numbers last year that are among the best in the state in their classification and a lot of them are the usual suspects yeah. for example eno benjamin i yeah. believe is the leading rusher in class 5a Leading returning rusher in Class 5A out of Wiley East. That shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. Yeah, he's awesome. He was awesome. We talk about him all the time. We talk about uh, Wiley East running back Eno Benjamin a lot because he's great at football. Okay? we You know, stuff like that. Uh, Sam Ellinger at Austin Westlake is one of the leading passers in the state. We talk about him a lot. Yeah. They're guys that we talk about a lot. And then there are guys that as you're putting together this list and you're saying and, and you start to look at who the leading receivers, running mm-hmm. runners, you know, uh, passers, interceptors yep. are, you go, huh, why don't we talk about him more? Right. So here's our opportunity to do that. Let's do that. So we're going to go from we're going to go uh, down by classification. All right. And you told me to give you one name in 6A right. and I fudged. Because yeah. these guys' numbers were so remarkably similar, and I feel like if I only listed one, I would be doing the other a disservice. Right. So which two, one do you want to start with? They were there are we will start with uh Rowlett oh. wide receiver Ladarius Dickens. Um Pretty good. Did you know he was DFW's leading receiver last year? Among all receivers, not just underclassmen. No idea. In fact, yeah. the top three, I believe, I don't know if Josh Fink graduated, but uh, the top three receivers, leading receivers mm-hmm. in the DFW area, were all underclassmen. You have Ladarius Dickens out of Rowlett, mm-hmm. uh, who is a straight up burner. Yeah. 93 catches. So, first of all, that's pretty good. 1,446 yards, 17 touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Pretty nice little year for Ladarius Dickens. And oh, yeah, he's coming back. Pretty good. Uh, and, and Rowlett figures to be pretty darn good this year as well. Uh, not only because of not only because of Dickens, but because they've just got uh, a lot of other talent coming back. Five starters on offense. They do lose their quarterback Logan Bonner, but whoever steps in at quarterback is going to have one heck of a wide receiver to yeah. throw to. Uh, Fourteen hundred and fifty-five yards Pretty receiving, good. nothing to sneeze at. The other guy is maybe a guy we've talked about a bit, but uh, if you go back and you look at the teams that put up crazy numbers last year. One of the teams that's always going to come up, or not always, but will should come up in your conversation, is Rockwall. Rockwall put up ludicrous numbers last mm-hmm. year, um, and they are bringing back one of the state's most uh, prolific receivers in Sam Crawford. Mm-hmm. Sam Crawford caught 77 balls for 1,436 ball, uh, 1,436 yards and Pretty 15 good. touchdowns. Okay, this guy is a baller, and he is a big play threat waiting to happen. So two receivers there, and then you step down, and one guy we have mentioned before is Kevon Ahmad, yeah. uh, the Colleyville Heritage mm-hmm. wide receiver, who as a sophomore yeah. nearly had 1,400 yards receiving and 18 touchdowns. Lots so to look forward to there. This is a this is a the DFW area as far as wide receivers is concerned. Uh, there's a ton of really really good yeah, guys. and our friends at uh, Dallas Morning News wrote about that the other day. That this might be one of the most exciting crops of receivers sure. DFW's ever seen. Okay, so that's in six A. Right. In five A, um. Not only does this guy have a great name. It is a great name. But he is very quietly one of the most prolific quarterbacks in the state. I'm talking about Victoria East quarterback Bailey Zappi. Okay? First of all, Bailey Zappi. Pretty great. great name. Okay? This kid, I think because he plays in Victoria... And yeah. Victoria is kind of out of the way. Sure. And uh, while Mike Foreman, our good friend down there at the Advocate, the Advocate does a great job yeah. covering that. Seriously great. Him, him, East and West. Victoria, I think, kind of, it's not quite that big city. It's not quite close enough to a big city to be its own standalone. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think that Victoria, which, by the way, both East and West are going to be pretty good this year, right. I think. Um 
but Victoria East has a quarterback. If you've heard of Victoria East for this year, a player on there, it's probably Chance McLeod, their tight end. Yeah. He's one of the best tight end mm-hmm. prospects in the state. But the guy throwing to him is not bad either. Bailey Zappi threw for, I believe he's 5A's leading returning passer. He threw for 3,275 yards and 42 touchdowns. And that's good. Yeah. Uh, that, if you were to stop right there, that would be very good. What impresses me most is that for a guy who threw the ball 280 times, Mm -hmm. he threw just seven interceptions. That's pretty good. For a junior to have the wherewithal to take care of the ball like that Mm -hmm. is really impressive to me. So Bailey Zappi out of uh, Victoria East is a kid to keep your eye on, Uh, not only because he puts up crazy numbers, but I also think, I really think this is going to be a big year for Victoria. I think both East and West, it's going to be a dogfight between those two, and I think that it's going to be a big, big, big year uh, for Victoria. So, moving on to 4A, here with 4A is Max Thompson. (laughs) So we talk about 4A, you know, it's it's a lo- it's been the talk has been Navasota for so long, right? Sheldon mm-hmm. Epler, uh, Trent Davian Dixon, um, and lots of great players coming back. We got Dane Ledford this year, who will be great. We know that. Uh, lots of lots of really good players. One that just is out there throwing ridiculous numbers is Tristan Williams and Andrews. He's mm-hmm. going to be the top returning ret- returning passer. Four hundred. Or 4,348 yards, 60 touchdowns, five interceptions. Dude, it's 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 weird that you mentioned what? it's weird that you mentioned that because Andrews Andrews has a ton of talent coming yes. back. Okay, between between not only Williams, but they bring back Keegan Thompson, who was a, mm-hmm. a superstar who who basically scored all over the place. 14 touchdowns receiving, uh, 12 to or let's see, uh, two touchdowns in the in the. Uh, in the kick return game, a uh, punt return touchdown. Uh, I mean, they've got a ton of weapons coming yeah. back uh, for a team that, that you know, and, and plus they've got eight starters on defense coming mm-hmm. back. Andrews, uh, I'm glad you brought them up because Tristan Tristan Williams had a tremendous year last year and deserves to be kind of talked about in those kind of terms. Yeah. Uh, another one. <laughs> I just, I did not realize. I knew he was good, right? Uh, Odom quarterback Michael Everett. Mm-hmm. Dude, Odom put up stupid numbers stupid last year. Stupid numbers, and they they were knocked out or early in the playoffs. I think, not super. I think s- I think second or third. Second, round. second, but still, like this is ridiculous. Three thousand eight hundred seventy six yards, <laughs> forty eight touchdowns. Yeah, dude, he can run too. Yeah, I mean, it's lots of running yards. So it's just, uh, yeah, no, no Odom. Idea. You're no one's talking about Michael Everett, man. <laughs> dude, but Odom he can sling it. Dude, Odom put up stupid numbers stupid. last year. And yeah. and he's coming back. We talk about Groveton a lot as like a team like that does that. Mm-hmm. And we'll, we, but Odom is right there. Like the, you should be watching that offense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the the Odom offense, the Odom Owl offense is pretty darn it pretty darn silly, salty yeah, man. It is. Um, and lurking down there in the coastal bend, like mm-hmm. who, yeah, you you don't. They're expect. a team. You, they're a team you forget about. They're a team right. you forget about. I mean, but like, but they they the offense has been so off the charts that they're gonna they're gonna be a, a danger to anyone they play. Right. Um, I'm not sure if the defense can hold up its end of the bargain as far as sure. making a real, real deep run. Right. But they're going to be problematic for everyone because yeah. they can put up 30 points without blinking. If they get blinking. hot in any game, yeah. you may not be able to keep up. Absolutely. Um, and then finally, okay. 2A. We've got guys that we talk about all the time. Jalen Mascoro, sure. Roshad Paul. Of course. These are stars, yeah. right? These are good. Did you know the top le- returning rusher in 2A this year? David Dixon, Memphis running back. 2,299 yards rushing, 14 touchdowns. I will be 100% honest. I did not know that. I that knew is that crazy. I knew he I knew he and the Cyclones had uh, had put up some big numbers. Yeah. I didn't realize he had that big of numbers. Yeah. Those big of numbers. Wow. That's impressive. Uh, 2,200 yards? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, look, and, well, and, and you're talking about 2A where right. 2A where there you know you could say if you want to make the argument it's a bad argument but if you right. want to make the argument that oh everybody throws the ball these days right. well that's true in right. 6A and in 5A largely a lot of teams throwing no. the ball in 2A that's yeah. where you have the yeah. slot tees that's where you have uh you know the wing tees that's mm-hmm. where you have the veers that's where you have these uh, power eye offenses the old school offenses where yeah. they are running the ball yeah. 60% 70% yeah. of the time and so to for him to be the leading returning rusher in the state is is wow that's yeah that yeah, man. that honestly surprises me that is not a name I would have come uh, up with you know that's I mean look we talk about Jalen Mascaro and Rashad Paul for a reason mm-hmm. they put up these kinds of numbers and they throw mm-hmm. 
you know, for ridiculous numbers of yards. But that's amazing, mm-hmm. right? For a guy that we really don't talk about a lot, uh, someone to keep your eye on going into this season. Actually, you as know well. what? I can give you. I know I didn't give you this this ahead of time, but I can give you one for the private schools as well. Ooh, a up. private yeah. school edition. Huh? So I was doing that. Um, I was doing the private school capsules, which is someone. I'd, I'd really, you. I really wish, honestly, I really wish that our viewers and our listeners. Like I could, they could be here with us so that I could explain the little annoying things about doing this magazine <laughs> because I feel like I could explain it to you. Sure. But then it would be for an audience of one because right. there's only a couple people in the world who understand how to make this magazine. Okay. Um, so returning, uh, uh, for example, the returning stat leader in 11 man as far as passing the leading passer mm-hmm. is Christopher Wilhemi from Tyler Gra- uh, Grace Community. He, I'm sorry, he ran for 2,260 yards, and he is back. The leading passer, Michael Massarella, Michael Massarella at Houston okay. Northland Christian, threw for nearly 2,800 yards last year. Receding, leading receiver at Tyler Bishop Gorman, Judah Bell had 1,350 yards. And then uh, here's one. I don't know if you have a guy who had 11 interceptions. A 10 is my best. Uh, Patrick, uh, Patrick Skalniak. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. Patrick. Uh, Skalniak at Episcopal School of Dallas had 11 interceptions That's last a year. That's a lot. As a junior. Yeah. Very I think nice. I had uh, two or three players in the 4, 3, and 2A ranks that had 10. That yeah. what we topped out at. Ten, yeah. every, you'll have a couple that'll that'll have 10, yeah. but... 11's a lot. Man. 11's a ton. More than one a game if you only play a regular season. Mm-hmm. Pretty, pretty nuts. Pretty nuts.